Hello everyone and welcome to our episode Showcase. I'm Bloodborne. Now, days at them, boom time. Boom hair. A truck we've been used by the old hunters and crafted by the wish shop heretics to powder kegs. A giant hammer equipped with the miniature furnace. How it works? I don't think anyone can really explain that one. When ignited and fired, it emits a small volley of flame that explodes furiously upon impact. Press the beats and then burn them. The brute simplicity of the boom hammer is favored by hunters with an acute distaste for the beasts. Yeah. So about that, I like, I like that. I like that they worded a miniature furnace. <sighs> What's the furnace powered by? Uh, probably your blood, if I had to guess. How does that work? Uh, <laughs> that's not ask too many questions, right? But enough of that, let's take a look at it visually. Now visually, you can see the weapon is actually quite heavily used. It already has a bent in the handle. Now, you can see the, uh, cr the, the chicken's beak at the very top of it is where the furnace is located. And at the bottom of the hammer, you can see the hammer head fitted with many uh, lugs. Those aren't valves or, or, or holes. Those are just a meat grinder, you know, you see with a meat grinder hammer. It pulverizes whatever it hits. I think it's a bit overkill, but actually, never mind. You, you, know, you, you kill a giant beast in this game. Maybe it's added for effect. Still, this weapon doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, in theory and in practicality, but besides the point. Now, when you activate the weapon, when you push the trick, all that simply happens is a quick whip and it's ready. It's nice and cooking. You probably burn some marshmallows over that. Or your opponent's face. Your choice. Now you can prick you and whip it all you want and it does not damage their ability. And it doesn't really do anything else for a trick. But anyway, let's move on to the animation. Now for the basic attack, well it's kind of what you expect, you swing a hammer around. It's heavy, it's rather slow, it's got decent range. Power attack is, well, as you can with your finger, it's the same thing, except a bit more of an uppercut and a bit more fierce. Get me for more of the jaw. Now, the power attack, for a charge power attack, you see it's simply using as a hammer and his overhead strike into the ground. And on from that, we got the, the light step attack, and you can see it's a bit of a jab. It's a bit hard to get a view on that, but I'm not sure really there's any jabbing potential, but eh. any heavy step attack is a straight up uppercut. It would be hard on the wrist. Alright, and the light rolling attack is pretty much a light quick club of the weapon. I'm not going to buy the heavy ones, it's always the same. Now, you can see the plunge attack there is a straight up hammer strike over the head and onto the ground. And then we get to the uh, trick attack, or the trick transition. Now you can see it's just dragging the, the igniter on the ground and it lights it. Probably in your opponent's face. Anyway, you can see a light ignition attack. It bolts, sweeps a flame and it turns off. This is the problem with this weapon in my opinion. Annoying, but regardless. Now, the uh, step back attack, see it's a jab, it's all the same idea, it's just a sweep of flame and flame damage added. But besides the point, you want to see the big one. There's a charge attack, which we all like. Boom. And his name. Alright, now, we've seen this, but you can see also see that it's also one-handed weapon, so your left hand is completely free. But let's take this a bit more, and you can see there's actually a bit of range to this boom hammer. You got three crows, and boom. You hit two when it clearly looks like it can hit any of them. So I think there's roughly a one meter radius. Maybe three coal, like, you know, 75% of a meter. So, <laughs> I'm not very good at measurements. Besides the point, though, you can see that it has a decent good uh, AoE there. That's really good for taking on groups. Damage is unleveled, so it's not killing the crows too well. But it will soon. Okay, moving on to the stats of the boom hammer. Now, physical damage, well, it's... Fairly plain. We got 90. However, the bonus tag is quite impressive at 52. Not only that, that's good enough for a, ba a base weapon as its own. It's got fire damage built in. 60 right off the gate there, and uh, a little light 19. Okay, going on to special stats, you can see the durability is actually 100, so it's actually not the most durable weapon, which makes sense if you consider, you know, a furnace exploding in every time. When you go on for that, we got a tribute bonus, we got a C for strength, which is where all that bonus damage comes from, an E for dexterity, and a D for arcane, which actually is in use here. A tribute requirements, so you need 14 strength and 8 dexterity. You'd think we'd need more strength to wield this, actually, considering, you know, it explodes when you slam it onto the ground with the furnace active. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> but no matter, when upgrading it, you can see you get quite a bit of damage every time you level up. Not a gigantic amount, but consider you level up both your, well, your physical and the fire damage at the same time, it's quite a bit. And the trigger bonus for strength has already gone to a B, so it's already showing its shine right there. So we can kind of get the idea of this weapon. 
You want to get one hit, you want to get one good. And even now, the treatment bonus for your arcane's even gone to C. And here we are at the final upgrade, even though I have one that's slightly higher upgrade because I tested it out myself long ago. So yeah, it's pretty good. And you can see the treatment bonus for strength is going to go to uh, pretty much A. <laughs> like, awesome. It's a slow weapon, but a powerful one. Now, a little bit of extra information. You can actually outfit the still with other elements, like Bolt, if you wanted to. You can't change the nature, but you can add a still added on, so you can actually have two elements at the same time with a good, strong base build. It's quite something, really. <laughs> okay, it's time for some performance. Now, no surprise, this weapon hits hard. Like, really hard. It's really good for staggering opponents, no surprise. Not to mention, your weapon on your, your offhand weapon is still available. Okay, we see the base hammer. It's pretty much pretty good for, you know, hitting opponents pretty hard. Knocks everyone over. But let's try the uh, boom hammer. And yeah, it definitely goes boom. <laughs> Wait, nicely too. Although it's still, a bit, albeit a bit annoying to cut, keep uh, winding this up. It's kind of like the tiny trust, except more obnoxious to use. But is it more powerful? Well, I kind of put in the same realm of power, because Tiny Trust is good for one-on-ones, the Boomhammer is good for groups and mobs. Easily. Not to mention, it's a lot better at staggering. But it doesn't mean it's a stagger king. It still has some things it can't stagger, as you'll see with the uh, bit of a issue with staggering and the Butcher here. Or Executioner, if you will. So it does stagger him, albeit at the beginning there, but not a whole lot, as he immediately followed up attack and hit me. But still, it's powerful enough. And same thing goes for Light Tack, he immediately bounces back. But, it doesn't mean he can't be defeated. Now, how well does the Fire Attack and Blunt damage do against a little Armored Buddy here? Well, you can see the Blunt Attack is pretty, uh, mediocre. Even a Charge Attack, in a, even all of its efforts, still only does that much. Flame? Actually doesn't do a whole lot more. This adds 100. You think it would do a little bit more against guys who are cloaked in armor. It would be kind of cooked on the inside. But you think, okay, that's not, I'm not going to bother with the Battle of Aiden, but you're wrong. I'm going to kick her ass. Now the base version, you can see that it's good stagger. Pretty good. And even the uh, ball power, power attack, knock her over. But it goes further than that. I can do a lot of attacks and just rattle this bitch around all day. <laughs> sure, she has the same amount of reach I do, but I can juggle her constantly. She can do nothing but, nothing but fall over. I love it. <laughs> now, against a shot of Yarnum, you think, Okay, these guys are really nimble. This is a bad idea. Wrong. These guys like to spend too much time during their combos and they have just the same amount of reach as they do, if not more, with the AoE blast. So you can actually abuse it pretty badly. <laughs> it's not even fair, is it? No, it isn't. Now, after all that, I showed you all the opponents I killed, and here's the durability loss. Six points. So this weapon is a little fragile. Especially if you put any gems that are really hamper that. Keep that in mind. That is a bit of a con. Alright, time to go on to the pros and cons of the Boomhammer. Now, for pros, well, it's a, quite a powerful weapon, if you will. It also has great mob potential with the uh, boom portion of the weapon. Now, also, on top of all that, it's also excellent at staggering set opponents, of most sizes too. Maybe not the giant opponents, but generally medium range and under get heavy staggered. <laughs> Also, it has that permanently built-in fire damage that actually scales wonderfully. Like, it's hex and scaling all around, actually. Alright. And I guess you can add a little bonus. You can actually add other elements on that, Was on top of that. Very few weapons are allow you to do that. Very few in Bloodborne. Alright, that's the pros. Moving on to cons, however. It is a giant hammer. It is slower than most weapons. Yeah. That's a big problem. Second, I find the trigger bolt mechanism a bit obnoxious, having to constantly prime it if you wish to continue using the boom portion of your hammer. Take it as you will, some people don't mind it, I personally find it very irritating, having to constantly interrupt my battle to constantly prime that. Alright, but I think that's only the real major cons here. Oh, and always it's a bit, a bit fragile as I mentioned. <laughs> okay, moving on from that, the score. Damage? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. This weapon has a lot of people, and it hits them pretty hard. <laughs> reach? I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Its initial reach is a standard 7, but that one little extra, almost a meter range, that boom, jumps it to an 8. Nice little extra grouping potential. Animation? Uh, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. 
The uh, boom portion doesn't really change the animations, and the animations aren't exactly overly impressive, but they're adequate. They're not too slow, but still pretty slow. Bonus, solid 8 out of 10. Pretty damn good, if I say so myself. <laughs> good bonusing on both physical and fire. Miscellaneous, a 7 out of 10. It's not the best weapon for every scenario, but it's definitely going to handle a lot of things in the game. So in total, I give the boom hammer 36 out of 50. It's an excellent weapon. Now here's what it looks like with gems fitted in. Now I could have fit more physical damage, but I wanted to boost that fire damage a bit and got quite a bit out of it. Let's see what it does. Yarim's already filled with fire, and you're definitely not helping with this hammer. <laughs> Your opponents will be both squished and scorched. Definitely his weapon is a force to be reckoned with in the right hands. Is it the best weapon in the game? No. But it definitely gives the best weapon a run for its money. At least in my opinion. Fun to use, though a little irritating, but awesome all the while. And that's been Showcase for Taylor. Thank you all for watching, and hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.